Welcome back to the channel. I'm Rochelle. This is Brampton Gardener. Today is going to be harvest recipe combo video, garden to table. We are going to be making a delicious pork stew. These are New Mexico 6. I also have some um, Big Jim peppers and we're going to be harvesting them. We're going to be roasting them and then to go into the stew, it's a very, very simple. It's only a handful of ingredients. Chili's diced. We need some diced onions. We need some lard or fat of your choice a big hunk of pork, and then chicken stock and or beer. Your choice. <laughs> and uh, that just all gets thrown together and it's a pretty simple recipe. It takes about an hour to come together and to sit and just do and I, it's absolutely delicious. So stay tuned and enjoy. So we're gonna start by harvesting our peppers. I have two varieties. One is the New Mexico 6 and the other is the Big Jim. So, Whichever one I have of those, um, I'm just gonna mix them in together. But um, this is why I mentioned that it's gonna be more of a red chili <laughs> because they are over ripening. Um, they, like this is, you know, it's a green chili, it's supposed to be, but we've had some a lot of heat this week and uh, everything's just kind of started to ripen up on me. So that's why we gotta hurry and get it done today. So we're just gonna harvest this up and grill it. So for the recipe I'm doing today, I need 12 of them, but we're just gonna cut all of them and I can save the others for another day. They freeze really well. beautiful pepper. Okay. okay, and I think I have one more plant with some of these on it. Let's see out here. Oh no, this one fell off and rotted. That's too bad. Excuse me, are you stuck? Did you get your head stuck in the paper in the pepper basket? Are you stuck in the harvest basket, really? Really? All right, so we're getting hot. One, two, three, not too hot yet, but I'm gonna start putting them on. Oh, we gotta weigh them. Oops, let's go weigh them, hold on. Okay, we almost forgot to weigh them. We are at 14.65, and I will re, um, subtract the weight of the basket, so. Oh my goodness, those are just absolutely gorgeous. Let's get those on the grill. Baby's cook index. And my sous chef for the day, you gonna help me out here? It's hot. He doesn't know why we don't just go inside in the air conditioning. Yeah. So we're just gonna start putting these guys on here. The barbecue's just coming up. I'm gonna toss them on. So we're just gonna get these a really nice char. Okay, and oh, not the baby ones. Nope. going today people two cameras going all right so I'm gonna be kind of watering and just watching these guys at the same time so
wait. Can you smell it? Mmm. Dexter's nemesis, Mr. Squirrel. You show him. You tell him, buddy. Yeah, you tell him. All right here we are. We are steaming up in there. So this is going to plate on top. I have. I put. I did take some of the pepper seeds out before I cooked them, um, and they are getting nice and dry because this is very warm. So I'm just going to let it. They feel nice and dry. I'm gonna wrap those up really quick. And then we're just gonna let this sit here and cool down for probably, I'm gonna say probably at least a half an hour. There's no point in me burning my fingers when it's like nine o'clock in the morning. So I'm not gonna be making lunch anytime soon. Everything prepped ahead of time in the kitchen. This unfortunately is what uh, 12 peppers cooks down to and one onion. So my oil is nice and hot and I'm just going to give those a little Oh, hot. Something in there is hot. Oops. All right, so this is just going to be a couple of minutes, and then I'm going to pull it out, and I'm going to put the meat in, and we're going to brown the meat nicely. So, just to get a little bit of color on this. as you can in the bottom, but I didn't leave it on that, that much. And I'm using a leaner cut. I'm using um, pork loin, not butt, because that's all that was on sale at the store. So, yeah, a little bit more of our home rendered lard. Okay, and then I'm going to do it in batches, so probably just half and half. dump our flour in and we're gonna cook that off make a little bit of a roux so you want to cook it for three minutes or so okay I think sufficient time has passed we're gonna pour in about half a can of beer one cup of beer okay and you're just gonna mix that in I 
and you're going to use this to deglaze that pan, right? So you want to get all those little bits up and off. Lovely juice in there. Our pepper and onion. Get all of that off. Oh, that's the good stuff right there. That is the flavor town. So we have a little bit left of the two cups. Bring this down to and rinse this out with it. There we go. That one piece of skin on there. Okay, and now we're gonna cover it. But I think I forgot the lid. I think the lid's inside. So it's just gonna sit and it's just gonna simmer for about an hour. And we're gonna kind of keep an eye on it, make sure if I need to add any more, I have another um, cup of stock here. And I think I'm going to vary from the recipe one little thing. Last time we had this, it's really good, but it's really rich. And while we were eating it, I couldn't stop but think how good some potatoes would be in here. So I think I'm going to go and chop up maybe two or three potatoes and I'm going to come back and put them in here. So that's another reason why I have the stock because it needs it might need a bit more volume um, once those potatoes start to release their starch. So I think that's going to be my only variant on this recipe. Um, it's not really going to affect the flavor profile at all. It's just going to help bulk up, stretch it out a little bit, and kind of cut a little bit of that um, richness that comes from the, the all the fat that I've <laughs> all that beautiful lard. Okay, so I'm going to come right back with the lid and put that on. And then what we're going to do is uh, I've got the barbecue heating up, and we're going to make some cornbread to go with it gonna check on it it's doing really good I just dumped in um, a handful of potatoes that I had chopped up and apparently forgot to turn the camera on so uh, that's literally all I've done since I saw you last I put the potatoes in and a little bit more of the broth and I gave it a stir and it's just kind of bubbling and simmering away and these uh, cute little mitts that I'm wearing I made these from a pattern last year from Sofiona Designs. I'll drop a link down below. But they're just the perfect little size for taking you know, your lids on and off. And they make great little gifts. And they're fun to play with. Hello. So I have my nine inch cast iron skillet. I put a bit of butter in there. It's sitting on the hot side right now just so it gets nice and hot. And that butter, ooh, it's sizzling. It's ready to go. So now I'm going to pour in my lovely batter that we just mixed up inside. I will drop a link down below. This is for a, it's a mix of a southern and northern style recipe. So it's going to be nice and moist and fluffy, but cooked in a cast iron so we get the crispy sides. Apparently that's, it's a, it's a new to me recipe. So I'll let you know what I think of it. gosh that looks absolutely delicious so we're gonna turn it and I'm gonna set it to the side without the burner and we're just gonna shut that and come back in about 20 minutes and just see how it's doing I have it down as low as it can go and it's still bubbling away pretty heavy I wish it could go a little bit lower but sorry it is so glossy oh my goodness it's just absolutely gorgeous Oh, still looks like it's got a little bit, oh yeah, still got a, still a little soupy in the middle. All right, put that back down. 
off of this, I think it's going to be plenty good. I just want to give it a nice scrape off the sure it's going to go bottom. Sure like some yummy cornbread. Here is the stew. Alright, I take a bite. Mmm. Mmm. That is absolutely delicious. And now for the cornbread. Oh my god. That is so good. 